Hello mga mahal! Welcome back to my learning channel. This is One Up Tutorials where you can level up your math skills with me, Miss B. So, hello, hello! Nagpabalik po ang inyong resident math teacher. Natutulungan kayo para mas maintindihan nyo po ang lessons nyo po sa math. So, as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button at i-click nyo na rin ang subscribe button para masaya. Para lagi kayong updated sa lahat ng aking mga latest lessons and videos in this learning channel. Okay? So, ano na po ba ang topic natin? Nasa measures of position na po tayo. Tayo po ay tapos na sa third quarter. Isasarado na natin ang libro ng third quarter. At bubuksan na natin ang libro ng fourth quarter. Wherein we will be studying statistics. Specifically, the measures of position. Now, this week we will be tackling the measures of position for ungrouped data. Now, what are our objectives? At the end of this lesson, you will be able to differentiate percentiles from deciles and quartiles. You will be able to calculate for specific measures of position given ungrouped data. And you will be able to solve problems involving measures of position. Yan po ay inline sa ating most essential learning competencies of the week, which are illustrates the measures of position, calculates a specific measure of position, and solve problems involving measures of position. Okay. So, let's jump right into it. Ano po ba ang measures of position? It is defined as uh, they tell whether a specific data value falls within the data set or its relative position in comparison with other data values. So we are comparing data here. Okay? And the data has to be arranged from ascending or from smallest to biggest or in ascending order na tinatawag. Okay, so unahin po natin ay yung tinatawag nating quartiles. Now, from the word itself, quartiles, ang kanyang root word po ay quart or quarter. Diba? May apat na quarter tayo sa isang school year. So, these quartiles, they separate or they cut our data into four equal parts. Meron po tayong first quartile, ang ating second quartile or yung more commonly known as our median, and then our third quartile. Okay? So, kung magkakaloon po tayo ng visual representation niyan, meron po tayong ganito. Okay? So, meron kang data, tapos nahahati niya sa apat yung quartiles, hinahati niya yung data natin into four areas. Okay? So, dito po sa area na ito. Okay? So, si Q1, si Q1 is the score is uh, higher than 25% of the data set. Okay? Kung kay Q2 naman po tayo pupunta, yung score po na yan ay mas mataas sa 50% of the population or the data set. At kung ang pupuntahan po naman natin ay ang Q3 or ang third quartile, yung pong score na yan ay mas mataas sa 75% of our data set or population. And then we also have yung tinatawag natin na interquartile range, which is just Q3 minus Q1. Okay po. So, yan po ang ating quartiles. Now, paano ba natin siyang sinosolve? Gagamitan lang po yan ng mahiwagang formula. So, as you can see, meron po tayong tatlong formulas dito. Formula for Q1, for Q2, and for Q3. Ito po, mga uh, mahal, ay hindi yung sagot mismo. These are just possessions. Okay? So, ang hinahanap natin dito ay yung position ng data value for that specific quartile. Na kung ang answer ay decimal, you need to round it off to the nearest integer. Halimbawa, ang nakuha nating sagot ay 3.3. Saan mas malapit si 3.3? Sa 3 o sa 4? Sa 3. Kaya 3 ang pipiliin natin. If we have 4.9 naman, saan mas malapit si 4.9? Sa 4 or sa 5? Sa 5 po. Kaya 5 ang pipiliin natin or the fifth position. Okay? So, remember, these formulas indicate the position and not the data value itself na hinahanap natin. Okay? These are just positions. Kaya siya, measures of position. So, let's have an example. Last month, Dr. Cho recorded the number of patients who recovered from COVID-19 for 11 consecutive days. So, how do we read this data? Halimbawa, sa first day, may 10 recoveries. Second day, may 8. Third day, may 5. And so on and so forth. Now, we have to find yung tinatawag nating quartiles. So, we have si Q1, si Q2, at saka si Q3. 
three. Yan ang hahanapin natin. So, ang first step po natin lagi for ungrouped data ay to arrange it in ascending order or from smallest to biggest. So, yun ang gagawin din natin. Now, when looking for the data values for measures of position, we actually have two methods. Ang first method po natin na gagamitin ngayon ay yung tinatawag na Mendel Hall and Sinchich method or MNS. Kasi mahirap siya i-pronounce. So, MNS na lang tayo. Okay? So, yun ang gagawin natin. First, we arrange our data. And then, we look for N or yung bilang ng data natin. And then, we look for our median. So, ano yung N natin? Bilangin natin yung data natin. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, our N is 11. Ang median natin. Now, I know na pag-aralan nyo na before ang mean, median, at mode. Paano natin hinahanap ang median? Ang median po natin, kinahanap lang natin yung N. Dadagdagan lang natin siya ng 1 divided by 2. Ito yung position Hinahanap kasi natin yung kalahati, di ba? Remember, median is the middle value if the data is arranged from smallest to biggest or in ascending order. So, since we have this, we have to, uh, 11 plus 1 is 12 divided by 2. That's sixth. So, yung sixth data natin from our data set, yan yung tinatawag natin na median. So, alin yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ito po. So, Ang ating median is 9. Pero ang median natin actually, siya na rin si Q2. So without using our formulas, we actually find or we actually found our median or our Q2 all already. So ang kailangan na lang natin hanapin ay si Q1 at saka si Q3. Remember, Q2 is our median. So madali lang siyang hanapin. Okay? Next. Hanapin ngayon natin ang mahiwagang dalawa pang nawawala, si Q1 at saka si Q3. Now, in order for you to memorize this formula easier, isipin nyo na lang yung percentage ng, na below that specific quartile. Diba? Kanina, pinaliwanag ko, si Q1 is higher than 25% of the population. And then, si Q3 is higher than 75% of the population. So, isipin nyo lang po kung ano yung fraction form ng 25% at ng 75%. So, for 25%, that's 1 fourth. For 75%, that's 3 fourth. Para mas madali nyo pong matandaan yung formula natin. Okay? So, Q1, that's just 1 fourth of 12. Okay? And then, our Q3 is 3 fourths of 12. So, in this case, sakto yung makukuha natin. Si Q1, this is 3. Or yung third position ang hinahanap natin. Okay, wait lang. Magbura lang tayo. Ayan. And then for Q3, this is going to be 9. Or the ninth data. Okay? So ngayon, balikan natin yung ating data set. Diba? Gamitin ko ng orange. So ito yung 6 natin. Nasaan yung third? 1, 2, 3. Ito yung third. Which means, ito po yung ating Q1. The data value for Q1 is 5. Okay? Now, sabi doon, ninth daw yung ating Q3. So, this is your 6, 7, 8, 9. This is your ninth. Therefore, this is your value for the third quartile, 11. Okay? So, i -re lang natin ha. Yung ginamita natin kanina ng formula, that's just the position. Okay, hindi pa yan yung tamang sagot. Position lang po yan. Hahanapin pa po natin yung tamang sagot by going back to our data. Okay? So, ito po yung tinatawag nating Mendel Hall and Sinchich or M&S method. Okay, here. So, now I have my second example. And we will be using the second method. Dito sa second example na to. Diba kanina sabi ko, meron tayong two methods. The first one was si M and S. Kasi may rap siya pronounce. So, M and S na lang. And then, the second one is what you call linear interpolation. Okay? So, let's uh, look at this example. We have this data set. And then, we need to find our quartiles. So, as usual, ang first step po natin is to place them in ascending order. So, now that we have placed them in ascending order... 
hahanapin ngayon natin yung n at saka yung median natin. Yung n, bibilangin lang natin kung ilan sila. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, our n is 13, and then our median is paano nating mahahanap. So, remember, our q2 is just our median. Okay? So, para malaman natin yan, it's just n plus 1 divided by 2. So, that's going to give you uh, 14 divided by 2. That's the seventh number. So, from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Our seventh number is 13. Therefore, this is our Q2. Okay? So, ang median natin ay 13. Okay? So, now, you have to use our formulas again. Okay? So, dun din magsisimula yung method natin na linear interpolation. So, para mahanap natin si Q1, that's 1 fourth of 14. And then, si Q3 ay 3 fourths of 14. So, what do we get here? This is just 3.5 at saka 10.5. Notice that they are both decimals. Okay? Now, linear interpolation, we usually use this kapag nagde-decimal yung position na nakukuha natin. Okay? Ang isa pang difference na linear interpolation dun sa ating MNS method is sa MNS method, ang hinahanap natin doon is, di ba, nag-estimate tayo ng position. And then, we will look for the data value from our given data set. Dito sa linear interpolation, yung makukuha natin at the end of all of the steps, yes, steps siya kasi medyo marami siyang steps, is the data value itself na. Okay? So, yun na yung sagot mismo. Hindi na tayo babalik doon sa data set to look for Uh, the answer. We will get the answer already if we're going to use linear interpolation. So, para mapakita ko sa inyo what it is, let's move on. Okay? Because Q1 is a decimal, we need to do linear interpolation. So, ito po yung spelling ng sinasabi ko. Baka mamaya, kanina nyo pa iniisip ano ba tong interpolation, interpolation na sinasabi ni ma'am. Ayan po yan. Okay? So, ang Q1 natin ay 3.5. Our first step is identification. We need to identify the decimal. That's 0.5, and then we need to identify the third and the fourth values. Bakit third and fourth? Kasi po, 3.5 yung nakuha natin sa Q1. So, we need to get the before and the after. Okay? So, ano yung third value natin at saka yung fourth value natin from our data set? Let's look back at our data set. Okay? Ito po yung data set natin. So, what is our third? Our third is 7. And then, our fourth is 8. Okay? So, now that we have identified that, that's 7 and this is 8. Next step is to subtract the two values that we identified. 8 minus 7, that's 1. Okay? Next is we're going to multiply this difference with the decimal that we got. Si 0.5. But this is just 0.5 because it's multiplied by 1. Tama? Tama? The fourth step is now to add to the third value or to the smaller number. Remember that we got two values, C7 at C8. 7 is the smaller. So, idadagdag natin yung nakuha natin kaninang sagot, 0.5 kay 7. So, we will get 7.5. Yan na po yung value ng ating Q1 or the first quartile. So, we don't have to go back to the data set. Ito na yung sagot mismo. Okay, what does this mean? It means 75% of the data has the value 7.5 and below. So, 25% of the data is below the score 7.5. Okay? So, sana po malinaw itong linear interpolation na method. So, syempre, hahanapin pa natin si Q1 at si Q3. So, kanin, ah, si Q2 pala, sorry. Si Q2, nahanap na natin. So, si Q3 naman ngayon ang hahanapin natin. So, Q3, ang nakuha natin kanina is 10.5. So, that means, number one, we need to identify three things. The decimal. And then, this, since this is 10.5, we need to look for the before, which is the 10th, and the after, which is the 11th. So, let's look back again at our data set. 
this is our data set. Ito yung 7th. So, 8, 9, 10. This is your 10th. And this is your 11th. Okay? So, 16 and 17. Tandaan natin yan. 16, 17. Next step is to subtract. 17 minus 16 is 1. Next step is to multiply. 1 times your decimal, 0.5, which is just 0.5. Next step is to add that, the 0.5, to the smaller number. So, itong dalawa na to. Dito na lang natin siya ilagay. So, you have 16.5. That is now your Q3. Okay? So, that means 75% of our values fall below 16.5. Okay? So, sana naintindihan po natin yan. This is how we use linear interpolation. So, now let's move on to discussing the next measure of position, which is deciles. So, kung kanina ang quartiles divide our data into 4 equal parts, deciles divide our data set into 10 equal parts. Okay? So, kung kanina nagdi-divide tayo by 4, ngayon po magdi-divide po tayo by 10 kasi deciles. Okay? Now, ano yung percentage equivalent nitong mga to? So, sa first decile, that is 10%. That means, sa first decile, the score of the first decile is higher than 10% of your population or data set. And then, if we're going to be looking at D7, halimbawa ito si D7, so that's 70%. Meaning, your D7 score is higher than 70% of your population or your data set. Okay? So, ganun po siyang i-interpret. Ha? Now, ano formula natin for deciles? If you notice, it's almost the same as the one for quartiles except nagbago lang po yung ating denominator for the fraction. Kanina, nagdi-divide tayo by 4 kasi quartiles. Ngayon naman, nagdi-divide tayo by 10 kasi deciles. And the K there is which decile we are talking about. So, that's going to be from 1 until 9. So, let's apply this. Okay? So, may data set po tayo ulit in ascending order. So, always your first step is to arrange your data in ascending order. Now, we need to look for two things, the fourth decile and the seventh decile. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay? Okay, so let's use our formula first. We have D4 and D7. So, for D4, we have uh, 4 over 10 because decile and then times... Ang n po natin ay 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Therefore, n plus 1 is 12. And then this is 7 over 10 times 12. Now, if we're going to use our trusty calculator for this, the first one, si D4, is going to be 4.8. And then, si 7 times 12 divided by 10 is going to be 8.4. Okay. So, in this case, dahil decimal sila, ang gagamitin natin ay uh, linear interpolation. Pero kung gusto nyo malaman how we use the MNS method, if ganito yung, yung makukuha nating position, ang gagawin po natin ay mag -e estimate tayo. Ibig sabihin, we will pick the closest integer. So, sa 4.8, ang pinakamalapit nating integer ay 5. At sa 8.4, ang pinakamalapit nating integer I8. So that means we need to look for the 5th and the 8th in our data set. So this is using the M and S method. Okay. The 5th one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is your 5th. Yan daw yung ating 4th decile. 10. And then, if we're going to look at yung 8th naman, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is our 8. So, according to the M and S method, our D7 is going to be 15. Okay? So, this again is using the M and S method. What if we're going to use it linear interpolation? Now, if we're going to use linear interpolation, gagawin natin yung steps. Okay? 
So, unti-untiin natin. Si D4 muna tayo. Si D4, ang nakuha natin ay 4.8. Tama? Ang first step po natin is identify the decimal, the before and the after. So, the before is the fourth. The after is the fifth. So, ang pang-apat po natin ay 10. Ang pang-lima natin ay 10 din. Okay? Next is subtract. Pareho lang sila. Therefore, 0. Next step is to multiply. 0 times 0 0.8. Yung decimal natin kanina. That's just 0. Fourth step is to add to the smaller. Pareho sila ng value. So, there's no smaller value. We're just gonna pick 10. Plus 0 is just 10. So, in this case, nakikita nyo po, yung D4 natin is 10. It's actually the same as the one in the MNS method. Okay? So, minsan, nagkakatugma sila, nagkakasundo sila. Pero most of the time, hindi sila nagkakasundo kasi yung kay linear interpolation, mas eksakto yung ibinibigay niya. That means may decimal po talaga. Okay? So, let's look at D7 naman. Kung D7, ang nakuha po natin ay 8.4. So, again, identify the decimal, the before, and the after. Your eighth is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15. And then, your ninth is another 15. So, nakikinikinita nyo na ba ang mangyayari dito? <laughs> Ganun ulit. So, dito, in this case... Our D7 is still 15. Kasi if we follow all that steps, we'll, we'll still end up with the same number as yung nakuha natin kanina. Which is 15 then. Okay? So, yan po ang deciles using uh, the M and S method and the linear interpolation method. Alright, so now let's move on to percentiles. So, kung ang quartiles ay divided by 4, ang deciles ay divided by 10, you got it and you know it. Ang percentiles po ay divided by 100. So, meron po siyang mga kaakibat or kamuka na other measures of position. Like, ang 10th percentile po, pwede rin natin siyang tawagin na first decile. Di po ba? Kasi pareho naman sila ng 10% ang nire-represent. Now, ano pa? Yung first quartile natin ay equivalent po yan sa 25th percentile natin. Okay? And then our Q2 or our median is the 50th percentile. Pwede rin siyang 5th decile. And then of course we have your Q3 which is 75th percentile. Okay po. So, itong si percentiles, siya yung kumbaga mas generic. Okay? Natawag. So, ano naman ang formula nitong si percentiles? K over 100 times N plus 1. So, madali lang siyang tandaan, di ba? Now, let's put it to use. We have an example. There are students from 10 Topas who have the following grades for math this quarter. So, we have our data set here. And we need to look for two things, the 30th percentile and the 85th percentile. Now, in ascending order, of course, this is the first thing that you do. You arrange your data into ascending order from the smallest or lowest grade up to the highest grade. And then, of course, we have to count our N. Ilan ang N natin? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Our N is 15. Okay, tandaan nyo yan kasi gagamitin natin yan sa ating formula. So, let's look for the 30th percentile using the M and S method. So, ang 30th percentile po natin, yung K, which is 30 over 100, times yung N natin ay, ano lang N natin? 15 plus 1, so that's 16. So, using our trusty calculator, this is 16, times 3 divided by 10, we have parang nagkamali ako. 30 times 16 divided by 100. Oh, nagkamali nga ako. So, we're looking at 4.8. Okay? So, dahil MNS method ang gagamitin natin, we're going to be looking for the uh, nearest integer to 4.8, which is 5. So, we need to find the fifth data. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
81. Okay? So, ang 30th percentile po natin ay yung score na 81. Using the MNS method. Si MNS, it's quick, it's faster. However, it's an estimation. We don't know the exact value of our quartiles or measures of position. Okay? Yung isa naman, si linear interpolation, it's mas mabusisi, pero mas eksakto yung sagot natin. Okay? Now, if we're going to be using the other method naman, si linear interpolation for the 85th percentile, ito yung lakakalabasan natin. So, P85, that's going to be 85 divided by 100 times 16. So, let's use our trusty calculator for that. Oops. 85 times 16 divided by 100. That's 13.6. Okay, so since we're going to do linear interpolation, first step is identify the decimal, the before, and the after. Okay, so let's look at our, let's go back to our data set. I-identify natin yung pang 13 at saka yung pang 14. So, this is our data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So, si 89 at saka si 90. Okay. 89, 90. Next step is to subtract. 90 minus 89, that's a 1. Next, you multiply that 1 to our decimal. It's 0 0.6. Next, you add that 0 0.6 dun sa smaller value, which is just 89. So, it's 89.6. That is now our 85th percentile. That means 85% of the class got a score below 89.6. Okay? Ganun po yon. So, sana naiintindihan natin itong si linear interpolation at saka si M and S. And as, uh, the, as with the three measures of position, si percentiles, deciles, at saka si quartiles. Okay? So, andito na po tayo sa last part ng ating discussion. Alam kong may sobrang haba na na video na to, but I still hope that you are still with me. <laughs> Nasa word problems na po tayo. Paano ba tayo magsasolve ng word problems that involve measures of position for ungrouped data? Let's look at the first problem. Dalawang problem lang to. Promise. Mabilis lang. So, the first one, it says the table in the next slide shows the time it took 50 students from 10 Sapphire to answer a Sudoku puzzle. Now, this one is in seconds. O ba mga genius itong mga nasa 10 Sapphire. My gosh, 25 seconds. Tapos ang pinakamabilis, 10 seconds lang nat natapos ang Sudoku puzzle. Ha How? <laughs> Kinapos pa ako. Anyway, so yon. Ito po yung data natin. As you can see, it's weirdly arranged from biggest to smallest. Kasi po, ang dahilan nito ay, tandaan nyo, ang measure natin dito is yung bilis ng tao. So, the smaller your time is, the better you are at doing the Sudoku puzzle. Kaya po siya naka-descending uh, order. Okay? Pero if we're just going to be looking at scores or normal numbers, then it should always be in ascending order. Okay po? Nag-iiba lang ang usapan kapag oras na. Kasi diba when, when it comes to time, the smaller your time, the better it is. Okay? So, ayan yung data set natin ha. We have 50 students. So, alam nyo na ang N natin ay 50. Now, si Cassie at si Mavi ay part daw ng 10 Sapphire class. Cassie's time makes, marks the third quartile, while Mavi's time marks the seventh decile. So, who finished faster? So, in order for us to look for this, we need to un interpret itong third quartile at saka seventh decile. So, let's try to interpret them using the percentile. Kung ang usapan natin ay third quartile, what is this in percentile? Diba 75th percentile siya? And then, if we're talking about the seventh decile, this is the 70th percentile. 
Now we're talking about ranking here. So if si Cassie's time is at the 75th percentile and Mavi's time is at the 70th percentile, sino yung mas mataas? Diba ito si 75? Therefore, Cassie is faster. So our answer for the letter A is si Cassie. Mas mabilis siya kasi mas mataas yung ranggo niya. Nasa 75th percentile siya eh. Si Mavi nasa 70. Hindi naman nagkakalayo pero alam mo yun, mas mabilis pa rin si Cassie. Okay? So, now for letter B and letter C, dito natin niya apply yung na. Natutunan lang natin a few minutes ago, which is yung looking for specific measures of position. We're going to be looking at the third quartile or the 75th percentile, at saka yung 7th decile or the 70th percentile. Okay? So, let's do that right now. Mag-calculate tayo. Gawin na, gamitin na lang, na, na, na lang natin si percentile ha. So, we have 70 at saka 75. Tapos, ang gagamitin nating method dito ay si M and S method. Bakit hindi si linear interpolation? Kasi, we know that the, what that Cassie's time and Mavi's time are there inside our data set. So, kailangan eksakto yung makuha natin. So, we need to do estimation if ever man ang makuha natin dito ay decimal. We need to look for the closest or the nearest integer. Okay? So, this is going to be 75 over 100 times 51 kasi it's n is 50 plus 1. And then, 70 over 100 times 51. Now, you can use si quartiles and si, si quartiles at saka si decils. You'll still end up with the same answer. Gusto ko lang gamitin sa percentiles because, you know, personal preference. <laughs> 51, and then I'm gonna divide this by 100. So, what we're going to get for the first one is 38.25. So, again, since we need an exact data from the data set, we need to find the closest um, integer value, which is 38. So, we're looking for the 38th value for Cassie. And then for Mavi, this is going to be 7 times 51 divided by 10. 7 times 51 divided by 10, that is 35.7. And the closest integer to that is the 36th. So, magkalapit pala lang pala talaga sila, no? So, balikan natin yung data table natin. So, in our data table, it's f um, 10 by 5. So, that means ito, yan yung pang 10. Ito yung pang 20. Ito yung pang 30. That's 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Yan si Mavi. 37, 38. Ito si Cassie. Okay? So, nakita nyo, isang segundo lang pala yung difference itong kambal na to. My gosh. They're geniuses. Anyway. <laughs> so, ayun. According to M&S method, Cassie's time is 14 seconds. And Mavi's time Sorry, ang pangat ng sulat ko. Ay, 13 seconds. Okay? So, ganun lang pong isolve ang mga word problems involving ungrouped data. And then, let's look at our second example. Tsuki is the fourth tallest learner in a group of 10. Hence, six learners are shorter than him. Tama naman. Okay? He's the fourth tallest eh. It also means that 60% of the learners are shorter than him. Tama naman. If Kyoko is the 8th tallest learner in a group of 10, how many percent of learners are shorter than her? So, ito medyo... Huh? Kailangan maintindihan nyo lang kung ano yung ibig sabihin. This is an interpretation of the measures of possession. Now, si Tsuki, nasaan siya? He's the 4th tallest out of 10. So, ano po ang 4 out of 10? Diba? He's the fourth tallest. So, ibig sabihin, from smallest to tallest, nandito siya, mas malapit siya, nasa fourth position siya dito. Fourth tallest learner. Now, if we're going to use deciles for this, he is at the sixth decile. Okay? Si Tsuki is at the 6th decile. Bakit? Kasi 60% of the learners are shorter than him. 
Okay? So, ito yun. 60% of the, sh- the the people are shorter than him. Kasi pang-apat siya sa pinakamataas. Nagkigets nyo ba? Na si Kyoko daw ay 8th tallest learner. So, pang-walo. Nasaan siya? Nandun ba siya malapit sa pinakamatangkad? O nandun sa pinakamaliit? Mas malapit po siya dito sa pinakamaliit. So, pag sinabi nating 8th tallest, ano yung kabaliktaran niyan? Siya po ay nasa So, imagine nyo ito yung 10th. Tapos ito yung 9th. Tapos ito yung 8th. So, siya yun. Okay? So, nasaan siya? Nandun siya sa 2nd. Okay? So, kabaliktaran siya. di ba 4th. Tapos, there are 6 learners shorter than him. Therefore, 60. So, itong si Kyoko ay 8th tallest learner. Therefore, meron lang dalawa sa dalawa na mas maliit sa kanya. Okay? Dahil dalawa lang ang mas maliit sa kanya. Then, how many percent of the learners are shorter than her? 20%. Ibig sabihin, nandito siya. Okay? Nasa second decile po siya. Meron lang dalawa na mas maliit sa kanya. Nagigets po ba natin? So, sana na-gets natin, ano, meron akong visual representation dito. Pag sinabi kasi nating 8th tallest, kumbaga, pabaliktad yung ranking niya. Okay? So, ito naman yung clue dyan. If you read and understood the first part of the problem, yan na yung clue nyo. From 4th, tapos there are 6 learners, therefore 60%. So, ito naman, 8, pabaliktad rin natin, 2, kasi 10, so, there are two learner, learners that are shorter. So, ang 2 na yan, that's 2 over 10, or that's 20% of the learners. Okay? Kaya doon natin nakuha yung percentage. 2 over 10. Okay? So, that's it, Pansit. Yun na po ang ating lesson. Alam kong sobrang intense itong lesson na to at sobrang haba ng video na to. But I hope that you still got up until this last part. If you have other questions, leave nyo lang po yan sa ating comment section down below and I will try to address them using another video. Okay? Maraming salamat po and I'll see you guys next time. Paalam!